Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I have something pretty cool for you. This was sent to me by my friends over at Beta FEV. This is the Beta FEV Express LRS Micro Transmitter Module. And what this sucker is, is an Express LRS transmitter that is capable of, that's right, one watt. One big old watt of Express LRS goodness. Do you need one watt of power for an Express LRS transmitter? Probably not, but hey, if it's available, might as well take it. Better safe than sorry especially with the new features of Express LRS having the ability to adjust dynamically the output of this module. This is very similar to the one I reviewed last, the 500 milliwatt micro module, except for obviously more power and it's in a black case instead of a white case, uh, except for one other little addition. We have a bunch of dip switches in the back of it, and that is for one really, really cool reason. This has VTX backpack functionality. If you don't know what VTX backpack functionality is, uh, it's kind of the same thing that TBS and Ghost are using where they use VTX lead follow, so you don't have to change your goggle module channel when you change the channel of the VTX on your quad. The difference between Express LRS's implementation of it as opposed to Ghost or TBS is it is brand agnostic. It doesn't care if you're using smart audio or tramp telemetry it works with everything and you still retain the ability to change your VTX via the Betaflight OSD. Really, really cool stuff. If you wanna see a video on that, hit the like button and let me know down in the comments if you wanna know more about the VTX backpack and I'll uh, be sure to do a video on that. Getting back to the micro transmitter module, it's not very micro, it's about as big as it gets. This fits into obviously a regular JR size bay Let's head over to the bench and take a closer look at it, and I'll show you what comes in the box. So obviously in the box, you're gonna get your transmitter module here. So they did make a change to this. The surround here for the USB-C port has been embiggened because the last one was a little on the small side and you couldn't fit most USB cords in there. Now this isn't Beta FPV's fault that you couldn't plug a USB-C cord in there. USB-C has a standard for the size of the outer gland end here on the cable. This cable would not fit in my old module because this does not conform to the USB-C standard. This plug here, which came with, I think my Samsung phone, this did fit. And the reason why it did fit is because this actually conforms to what is posted as the standard size for a USB-C connector. If you look, you can see there is a significant difference and therefore this one didn't fit. So what they've done is they've heard the complaints from people and they have embiggened the housing so you could fit more larger USB-C cables into it. And even at that, this one is so far out of the spec, this one still does not work. Also in the box, we do get one of these uh, traditional folding style antennas. We get a cable here. This has a servo connector on one end and a plug for the bottom of the module. And this is for a S port input from other radios. And it also comes with, this is this is something I really like, this little Moxon style antenna. Now here's a, here's a trick guys. When you get this antenna, so this is covered up with a, with a small sticker to keep the paint from getting in the connector. So when this is new, you need to take your fingernail and you need to scrape that sucker off of there not trying to just force through it like a tamper seal. And then we have our awesome little 2.4 gigahertz Moxon style antenna. These things are really nice, flexible, versatile, and uh, very, very good. Also, you have the ability to power this externally off a 2S LiPo, only 2S, not 3S, 2S only. So this has been updated with the official Express LRS release of Express LRS, not the development build that came on the module. I wanted to make sure I got off the development build and got onto the mainstream build as soon as possible, just in case there were any bugs from that development build. Uh, we've worked them out. So when it starts up, you're gonna see on the back here, you have all the information you need. This is not what it's gonna look like when you get it factory fresh. You're gonna just see the Express LRS logo. You'll have to hold the five direction joystick in to get this menu to come up. So with the official release firmware, we see we have our firmware version, what our output hertz is set to, what our telemetry ratio is, and what our power output is. And if we hold this down, we're gonna come to here, we can do our packet rate, we can adjust to whatever we need. 
transmit power, telemetry ratio. We can put it in bind mode from here. We can activate the Wi-Fi antenna on the inside to start the firmware updates. And uh, that's about it. And it's gonna tell you where to go on your local browser to flash to this. But I'm gonna show you a different way to update this module. Also, as you can see in the back, we do get our RGB LEDs, wait, ErgoBleds. We get our ErgoBleds in there. And there's also a fan that comes on at a predetermined power output, which you can set as the end user in the Lua. And in the Lua, we have transmit power. We can set our max power. We can set dynamic power. So this will actually scale the power output of the module based on the, uh, the connection quality between you and the receiver. And you can set the fan threshold for when the fan kicks on. Right now it's set at 250 milliwatts and the fan is off. If I set dynamic power to off, that fan will turn on. It is kind of a noisy fan. I can kind of hear it, but it is what it is. All right, so let's dig into this thing and take a deeper look at what we have on the inside. So this is what you get on the inside of the module. You have your fan. It's uh, it's an easily replaceable fan if for some reason yours fails or gets noisy. Beta FEV does sell replacements or you can find something that does fit this form factor. It's just a two pin fan, nothing special there. Uh, it is clear so the RGB LED or the ErgoBled can shine through it. We have this massive heat sink on here to dissipate the power from that one watt power amplifier that is on this thing. So inside the case we have a flash enable button for the internal Express LRS module. And then we have another button over here and this is for the VTX backpack. We're not gonna need these as long as everything goes well. We shouldn't ever need to get inside of here. If you did have a failed flash, this is how you would manually force the module into bootloader mode. Hopefully you don't have to go there, but that's where the buttons are for this. And in the back here, we have our RF transmitter and we have our dip switches. Uh, yeah, it does seem weird that there are dip switches, especially in this day and age. We got rid of dip switches a long time ago on our VTXs, but now we have them on this. The reason why we have dip switches is because we have one USB port here for flashing firmware, and that has to be able to go to either the internal Express LRS module or to the VTX backpack module. They are two separate components, but they're sharing the same board. So what these switches do, these allow you to select what module that USB-C port is connected to. If you have one and two in the on position, everything else off, you're going to be flashing to the internal Express LRS module. If you have switches five, six, and seven enabled, you'll be flashing to the internal Express LRS backpack module. And then if you have three and four up, it's just in regular operational mode. Now you don't need to actually mess with any of these things because they are all flashable over Wi-Fi. Uh, and this is strictly for flashing over USB-C. Now, like I said, there are two different modules inside of this thing that need to be updated when there are new updates. And there are two different ways you can do it. You can go about updating it over Wi-Fi or you can do it over USB-C. I prefer the Wi-Fi functionality because why not? It's Wi-Fi, it's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to update both the internal Express LRS module and the internal VTX backpack module right here. So first thing you need to do is power up your radio with the module in it, obviously. I know it's sacrilegious, I'm using a Mambo with Express LRS, but that's just because I want the best. Go into your Express LRS Lua. If you do not have the Lua script installed on your radio already, uh, download it from the Express LRS configurator. I'm going to Express LRS. I'm going to go down to Wi-Fi connectivity. And we're gonna hit enable Wi-Fi. We have a bunch of different options here. Enabling Wi-Fi is the main X the main Express LRS module. RX Wi-Fi is the ref the Wi-Fi on the receiver, which oh, so we don't have connected right now. And then we have Backpack Wi-Fi, that's the other module inside of this. And then we have VRX Wi-Fi, that is your video receiver module if you have a receiver uh, connected to it. Or if you're using the TBS Fusion, you have that flashed with the proper firmware to have it talk. So we're gonna go to enable Wi-Fi. Uh, yep. All right, once you have Wi-Fi enabled, you're gonna go down to your computer's Wi-Fi settings, if you have Wi-Fi settings, hopefully you do. If not, you're gonna do this with the USB-C cable. You're gonna find Express LRS transmitter. This is probably gonna be the first and last time you're gonna see it this way. 
especially if you follow the directions here, which makes life a lot easier. You're gonna connect to that and the SSID password is Express LRS, all one word. Go ahead and connect to that. Now the Wi-Fi transmitter and receiver on these modules is extremely weak. So you do kind of have to get close to your antenna uh, or you're receiving whatever you're using to send and receive Wi-Fi signals. And your browser should open up a window like this. And to make sure we're connected to it, we're gonna go to 10.0.0.1. And that is the internal GUI for flashing Express LRS. We're not gonna use this. We're just looking and kind of trying to educate you on how to update this stuff. We're gonna go into the Express LRS configurator and it is automatically gonna find that receiver module. It's listed right here. So go ahead and hit, hit select and it should automatically fill in all the information you need. If it does not, we're gonna to need to select beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz and beta FEV 2400 TX micro 1000 milliwatt. That's the one we need to do. We're gonna select Wi-Fi. And if you need that Lua script, here's how you get it. Real simple in the configurator. Go ahead and set up your binding phrase and all that stuff. This is not considered a security thing. This is just a binding phrase. Don't use your social security number. Don't use your the single password that you use to log into every bank account and everything you own under the sun. This is not a secure thing. This is easy to figure out. There's a, a, a UID conversion tool. Don't, it's, this is not a secure thing. That's why I don't care about showing you because it doesn't freaking matter. All right, over here, home SSID and password. Hit that, fill in your SSID for your normal home Wi-Fi. It is all case sensitive, remember that? And click this and enter in your home Wi-Fi password. This will make life a lot easier going forward anytime you need to update the firmware on this module because it will actually log into your router rather than just being a direct connection to your computer. Way more stable, trust me on this one. And then after you fill that out, go down here and hit build and flash. What this is gonna do is it's going to download a lot of dependencies over the internet. If you don't have an internet connection because you're on Wi-Fi to your radio, this isn't gonna work. You'll have to just do the build function and it'll give you the file when you're done. Uh, my computer is connected to Ethernet and Wi-Fi at the same time, so I can do this. If you can't connect to the network, your home network and your receiver module at the same time and still access the internet, this isn't gonna work for you. So just keep that in mind. This takes a while the first time. And we're gonna see here, we're actually, we're actually getting the configurator to write firmware to the module. And there you go, it should say success at the bottom. If it comes up with a big, nasty, ugly red screen, something didn't work, uh, try it again. And if that doesn't work, try it again. If that doesn't work, try what I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Now, before you power cycle the radio, make sure the module turns back on before you do anything else. That just ensures that it has finished the uh, firmware writing process. If for some reason you can't download this firmware and be connected to the module at the same time, here's what you're gonna have to do. Either connect it through the USB-C cable and enable the dip switch one and two and flash it over UART. Or what you can do is do build. And what we're gonna get is we're gonna get two files that pop up. Uh, they're the exact same file. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I like to take that file and drop it to my desktop because it's just a lot easier to find in the end. We're gonna go back to that 10.0.1 uh, website and once you go to that website you're gonna see the internal flashing GUI you're gonna come down here to choose file find your TX module firmware open it and click update and that's how you do it if you can't be connected to the Wi-Fi of the module and the Wi-Fi of your network or the internet at the same time that's the way you're gonna do it or we can always go back to flashing over USB pretty simple plug the cable in flip the two switches Boom, you're good. Now the benefit to having it set to your home Wi-Fi network where it actually logs into your home network is now it pops up as a local IP ad. Look down here, we have uh, 192.168.0.44. This is actually logged into my home Wi-Fi. I can walk around my entire house and have a good connection to the internal module as long as I have decent Wi-Fi coverage in my house. And just like before, hit select, it'll fill this all out. Boom, you're good to go. The process is the same for flashing the internal backpack function. If you wanna update the firmware on your VTX backpack or set the Wi-Fi SSID, very simple. Again, enable backpack Wi-Fi, 
connect to the network. Password is Express LRS, as everything else is. Um, you're going to see the browser pop up. Go to 10.0.0.1 to make sure we're connected to it. We have right here Express LRS update page, and it's for the transmitter backpack, and it's flashed with Happy Model TX backpack firmware. That's really strange, and it really comes down to the fact that the VTX backpacks are all the same. It doesn't really matter what firmware goes on it at this point. Uh, hopefully, the devs will make a target for the beta FPV radio just to kind of ease up some of the confusion, if there is any. We're gonna go back to the configurator. We're gonna click on the left-hand side where it says backpack. We're going to find the latest revision. We're gonna hit transmitter, and we're just gonna stick with Happy Model TX backpack. Again, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna do it over Wi-Fi. Set your binding phrase, your home SSID, and your password, and then click build and flash. If, again, you're able to be on the internet while connected to the Wi-Fi of this module. Easy test, go to Google, search for something. If it doesn't work, do the build and flash through the, through the website GUI like we showed before. If you can get on the internet and connect to the module at the same time, hallelujah, just click build and flash. And again, once it's on your home Wi-Fi, even easier. And now when we select VTX backpack, it's gonna log into our home router and there it is on our home network, super simple. And again, you can flash this over USB, flip switches five, six, and seven, and that will enable the connection between the USB port and the VTX backpack. All right, this is all well and good, but what about the power output? We're gonna use this. Hang on a second. We're gonna use this. This is the Immersion RC RF power meter. It is not a calibrated precision piece of equipment, but it gets you in the ballpark. The one thing that we're absolutely going to need to do this is an attenuator. Uh, an attenuator is necessary on this because this thing seems to lose accuracy over 500 milliwatts. It's also bad for the module and you can't get an accurate reading above about five, 600 milliwatts. So we're gonna use this guy here. This is a 10 decibel attenuator. If you're looking for one of these, I'll put a link down in the video description for this. It's gonna be affiliate link, obviously, because that's how YouTube works. We're gonna use this and this to measure the power output of this. Oh, and also I'll put the, the link to the STL for this nifty little holder down in the, uh, the doobly-doo. Good design. All right, set of 25 milliwatts, we're getting 15 milliwatts out of it. And remember, I am going through this 10 decibel attenuator. I found that it makes no real appreciable difference below 500 milliwatts to have the attenuator on versus not on. So I'm just gonna leave it on for the entire test because well, just makes my life a little bit easier. So at 25 milliwatts, we're looking at 15 milliwatts. 50 milliwatts, we're hitting 33. 100 milliwatts, we're looking at 61-ish milliwatts. 250. Looking at 172, 173, somewhere around there. And then you can hear the fan is kicked on. Well, I mean, you probably can't hear it, but I can certainly hear it. 500 milliwatts, we're pushing about 380-ish milliwatts. And at one watt, we are jumping up to a about 950 milliwatts. Remember guys, this is not a precision calibrated piece of equipment. It's just something for reference sake. So we're at one watt. What happens if we put on dynamic power? I don't have a receiver turned on anywhere and enable dynamic power and it's gonna drop down to that 25 milliwatt option. I'm gonna bump that back up to full power and we're gonna let this thing bake for a few minutes and we'll see what happens uh, when it kind of warms up. Remember that fan's on, so it should have decent cooling. All right, folks, it's been a few minutes and it seems to stabilize out at about 890, 900 milliwatts, somewhere around there, pretty close to one watt. And the heat coming out of the fan is, uh, it's quite toasty. I'm glad that there's a fan here. <clears throat> Jumper T Pro. <clears throat> quite warm, quite warm. So that was a pretty deep dive into the Beta FEV Micro 
Express LRS one watt module. What do I think of this module? This is pr this is pretty darn good. The casing is very well made. It's not 3D printed. They do have a special edition 3D printed one on their website. I think I'd stay away from that. Although it is a very uh, robust case because it's I think it's SLS nylon. If you don't know what SLS nylon is? It is it's good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, comes with all the good stuff. Comes with two different antennas. I love the Moxon style antenna with the MMCX connector on top of it. Great little setup. I love that they've included the VTX backpack function. I know it seems kind of kind of trivial, like okay, I can just change my channels by hand. But when you have the option, it's it's awesome. You go into the radio, set your channel, set your band, set your frequency, and boom, your quad changes, your goggles change. Why not? If it's an option, why not? If you have the TBS Fusion, it's merely just a firmware update to it. Uh, if you want to see a video on how to do that, let me know in the video description down below. And if you have another uh, module, any of the other modules out there, all you have to do is solder in a little module. All right, folks, what do you think of this thing? I've been using it a lot for quite a while now, probably over the last month I've been using this thing. Uh, I, they sent me a prototype version before this one, which was basically the same hardware. The dip switches were a little bit different. They were inside the case, not accessible from the outside, whatever, no big deal. But the rest of the internals were basically the same. I've had zero issues with it. It does get uber hot at one watt. Thankfully, we have that fan in there to cool it down. This thing has been extremely reliable. I've had zero issues with it. Um, but then again, like I said, this is a sample size of one. I don't know, your results might vary, but I do like this module and Beta FEV is, they've made a good one here. All right, folks, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is there anything else you want me to look at? If there are any questions about this that I didn't answer, put them down there. I'll just be certain to reply to them. I read every comment. Yes, guys, every comment I read. I don't necessarily respond to all of them, but I pretty much read every comment and I love it. Thank you guys. See you next time and stay positive. Oh, yeah.